again. Uh, I was thinking with Dueling Fates coming out in November, instead of making guides to heroes who are pretty much unquestionably going to be changed in the new patch, I just make more specific guides about one part of a hero, like a unique item build or every possible interaction that a specific spell has and how to build around it for each game. Elsewise, these guides would pretty much immediately be out of date and would require me to make an updated version a week later. Actually, no. Capitalistically, that's an amazing idea. Oh well, too late. I've already written and edited the script. I mean, started recording this completely ad-libbed conversation I'm having with you and you alone. With that in mind, let's do something stupid. Let's go LC Jungle for Stuff Rush. Okay, calm down. Calm down. I was just kidding. Well, half kidding. Uh, okay, uh, just bear with me. See, the thing is, Legion Commander is one of those heroes that I actually advocate completely building around her ultimate duel. With Doom and Tidehunter earlier, we tried to build to function without depending on their ults, but LC's is a spell that disables as long as Bane's Fiend's grip and has a much more dependable 50 second cooldown. Plus her kit sort of lends to supporting it. So really all items would boil down to either helping you get to the duel or helping you survive the duel. But I can't elaborate on those outrageous claims I made earlier yet. I gotta elaborate near the end of the video so I get more money. Hey, did you pick LC first? First off, why? Oh, uh, cause you saw someone else hovering over it? I mean, that's understandable. He was probably gonna go jungle, you know. And we all know jungle LC loses gaps. I mean, it's pretty much a fact at this point. Oh, but now the guy who wanted LC is threatening to feed? Oh, well, this is a doozy. You either have to give up LC or try to call his bluff. Oh, never mind, he abandoned. Well, that worked this stuff out pretty well. Secondly, if you pick near the end though, which I'd recommend, you can counter pretty much anyone who isn't a saving support. Elsie's a counter to AM, to Weaver, to Storm, anyone mobile, and obviously if you pick Elsie first, they just don't pick them at all. She beats Bristleback by making him face her, she counters people who attack fast but don't do much damage per hit, like Huska. She counters illusions and summons with overwhelming odds, and she counters single target long duration disables, heroes who attack, heroes who don't. She sort of counters everything. But Dota's not really a binary game. A hero countering a second hero doesn't mean that the second hero can't counter them back. It's like using a ghost type move against a ghost type Pokemon. Does that make sense? I don't know memes. The last meme I understood was Kilroy was here. Basically it boils down to if Elsie duels anyone who isn't the Oracle, then the Oracle save that person, and so then Elsie's new goal is to duel the Oracle, who is a squishy support that Elsie can logically kill which Oracle then plans around and stays at the back, so then LC has to build towards getting to Oracle, so Oracle builds to escape her. It's pretty much just counters all the way down. Really, the way to beat the system is to get good, or just depend on the fact that skilled Oracle players don't actually exist. So yeah, actually, LC just, yeah, no, no counters, GG. I like LC. She's really versatile in her laning, and with her skill build to level 7. She can pretty much go anywhere and succeed, carry mid, off lane, support in some ways and jungle. <clears throat> but before we talk about that, here's a typical LC mid or offlane guide. Overwhelming odds with a value point in moment of courage, then press the attack, with overwhelming odds being a nuke that maxes out generally around 320 damage for a single hero and a creep wave. Max again early when our hero's health pool is only like 800 or so, means we're doing as much of their max HP as possible. Plus it's good to secure last hits, push the lane for runes, and lets you get movement speed to run in and get a couple of cheap shots and proper two of moment of courage. For offlane you might change it up like so and get more in press the attack so you can spam a soul ring for spamming more of your Q. And then you jungle with... Uh, just do this. Don't tell anyone that I told you. Overwhelming odds, as I touched on before, works by targeting in an area. I mean, you, you know that. Calculating every creep, illusion, and hero in the circle, and then damaging them all by the sum. So five heroes times 120 per hero, plus the base damage, so it's 600 damage new for all. Illusions count as creeps, so PL and 10 illusions would be 100 uh, base, plus 120, plus 10 times 20, 420. Pretty decent new. It also has a little bonus in uh, that it deals 25% of current HP as damage to summons, like illusions, which ticks before the actual damage, which for the same of my unmathematical brain, it means they die. They just die, okay? Also, for every creep you hit, you get 3% movement speed and 9% for any hero. It lasts for 7 seconds while the spell only has a 15 second cooldown. Handy for chasing people down for their duel. Uh, really good for cancelling blink daggers with its long range and a pretty short cast time. Press the attack is one of the best support spells in the game, and weirdly, it's on LC. Does that mean LC can be played as a support? Yeah. Yes and no. We'll talk later about that. Target it on any allied unit and they get 5 seconds of 140 attack speed and 60 HP regen, but it also removes pretty much every stun, most silences, every item debuff, every creep debuff, you might just say it's a pretty decent spell. You can purge a 5 second Marana arrow, you can purge Bane's Fiend script, Batrider's flaming lasso, uh, Elsie's pretty much the carry oracle. Oh, 
sorry, I misspoke. Oracle is the carry Oracle, excuse me. Moment of Courage is not a unique attack modifier. When attacked, Elsie has a chance to immediately counter-attack without interrupting her previous attacks. It procs when an attack against Elsie is started, rather than when one hits her. That means missed or cancelled attacks can still proc it. It can proc off forts, uh, towers, and the fountain! And any attack modifier can proc off of that proc. I mean, the inbuilt 85% life still already does, and you can stack anything else on top of that. And then there's Jewel. You know what this does. Jewel breaks if the Jewelist is separated by 2,000 units. The damage bonus buff goes to the winner. There is no winner if Jewel runs out. And Jewel is the absolute most important event in any game of Dota. What I mean by that is Axe's Berserker's Call can't pull them out. Winter Wyvern's ult can't. Lone Druid Savage Roar doesn't push them. Four Staff, Earth Spirit's Allied Pull has no effect. Only spells like Io's Relocate or Phoenix's Upgraded Supernova can pull them out. And then the duel just ends and LC goes, Hey! What's sad is that people have found out the embarrassing way that if you lose to an illusion, it gets the bonus damage. I'd show you an example, but it's hard to deliberately be that bad. Oh boy. Okay, here we go. I touched on it earlier, but I want to elaborate on what I mean with Elsie's two classes of item purchases. Really, winning the jewel is like 10% of the concern when buying items. She usually just naturally has the advantage. Start off with a typical PMS and tangos. To proc Moment of Courage, you need to be hit. You don't actually have to take damage. In fact, with PMS, you can pretty much proc it off of creeps without taking any damage from them in return. You're gaining health by tanking damage. PMS is pretty cool. Tangos go without saying. If you were to, uh, jungle... In theory, uh, two clarities give more health regen than tangos for the same price uh, through press the attack. It only works on jungle because on lane, clarities have about a minute's worth of time to be cancelled by one attack. The jungle creeps can't do that. The eternal battle between phase and treads rages on with LC. Phase is amplified by the movement speed of overwhelming odds and lets you snag jewels you otherwise couldn't have, while also giving more damage per moment of courage proc and more damage is better than more attack speed early when you get attack speed from press the attack and moment of courage. But Treads gives more mana and makes press the attack more efficient. Cast while on and Treads switch to strength when it's done. Really, in practice, it'd honestly just come down to cutting down the amount of buttons you'd have to press. And this is an actual tangible thing that people like you can run into all the time that these guides don't ever talk about. Let's say there's a Husker who's finished pushing out a wave and is running back to base. Let's say, uh, for the example, he has a Blink and a Lincolns. You've got Armlet, Blink, Silver Edge, Blade Mail, Heaven's Halberd, Treads. That's six items. Not a good build, but it's a build people have absolutely gone before in LC. He's is way out leveling you right now. Perhaps it's because of your shitty build. But you can win the duel as long as you do everything in the correct order in a split second before he can react. He can't see you yet, so use that. Okay. Ready? This is what you need to do. You need to trade switch to end, cast, press the attack, blink it, insta cast, blade, 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 turn on your armor, cast over and switch to straight to him. Six activatable spells, two abilities, and hesitating or missing one causes him to get away. Without blade mail, he out damages you. Without halberd, you don't break the Lincolns, and he just runs off. Basically, it could get hectic. That's That might be a good way to sum it up. Obviously, with muscle memory, this gets easier and easier, and muscle memory would be a byproduct of playing LC a lot, just like becoming a good LC is a byproduct of playing LC a lot. I'd go treads, but going phase makes sense too. It's really up to you. And then, of course, we focused on mobility to get those jewels. When phase doesn't cut it, we go blink, we go shadow blade, or we go four stuff. Okay, so the thing is, the difference between getting a jewel off or not is more often than not just a matter of maybe a hundred units. The Dota map sort of constructed in such a way that early game, while you just have four stuff, most heroes are in narrow lanes. Most of the map, you can be within 600 units of a player without them actually seeing you because of trees and all that. Maybe not here or in Radiant or Dire Base, but we don't really visit those parts of the map until we've already got more mobility. Sure, you pop out, they just run. That's why we need the mobility, but only the tiniest bit early game. But I'm not just saying four stuff over blink to be a control so I can do some clickbait stuff and have it in the thumbnail. I do it myself even when not making guides. Four stuff's the same price, has a safer build up, sets are alright, I guess. But the big thing about force over blink is that it can be cast on allies. Oh wait, no, that's not the big thing. It can be cast on enemies. Enemies like Storm who have seen you pick LC and so have rushed to Lincolns first. Enemies that you need to lock down even though they have Lincolns. Blink can't break Lincolns, Force Staff can. In fact, it's the cheapest item in the game to do so, before Dagon or Yules, which we wouldn't ever get, knock on wood. The first actual item LC might feasibly go is Halberd, which is a thousand gold more. And so, hey, we've got Force Staff now. We've rushed a Force Staff, we've died five times, but still managed to get the Force Staff in a pretty early time because it has a good build up. We can still go Blink after that, and in fact, we definitely should. We still go Blade Mail, we still swing to Silver Edge to remove passives, and then, yeah, we can go ahead. Uh, an 8 second disabled is pretty much impossible to argue with. Sure, you're pretty much sent to the Shadow Realm during the duel, unable to be hurt by outsiders watching, and whoa, whoa, weird. 
uh, um, just sort of accidentally, we started turning this into a sort of utility core. We've got saves for allies, we've got nukes and disables for the enemy team. I almost forgot the jewel gives damage. Take Legion Commander offlane or mid to start off with. You can put a lot of pressure on both lanes just by spamming Q. Having boots means you can trade pretty well with supports, should they appear, even if they're ranged while well, you're not. You're pretty tanky. Starting off with a mango and building soul ring makes a lot of sense on the offlane to spam overwhelming odds. Uh, with a coddle, you've pretty much already won the lane. As soon as you hit level 6, set up for a jewel win. If there is one anywhere on the map, go for it. Never take time out of your farming to wait in the shadows to actually get a jewel. Jewels aren't as important as farm. Yet. I mean, I've had games where I've won no jewels and won the game, but that's on a case of I lacked jewel damage because I avoided jewels that weren't readily available to me. Not because I waited to get a jewel and then gave up farm because of it, and then lost the jewel. Having no jewel damage isn't synonymous with a losing game. Having no farm as a core sort of is. When you start getting into dueling, don't feel obligated to start a fight with a jewel. I don't really know why people do that. Your only requirement is to end the fight with jewel. I mean, sure, if you need the stun, go for it, but LC doesn't really need to be the initiator. In fact, you don't even need to do anything at all other than get the jewel off. My favorite way to play from behind with her is just to keep four stuff ready so when a kill happens nearby because of a teammate, I come in with the assist to hold them in place for the last hit. And hey, jewel damage. As you get to late game, the threat of being ignored and then just taking their ancient in two hits gets closer and closer to reality because at one point you might be hitting for 500 damage a hit, you've got an AC and a desolator, it sort of, yeah, it gets up there pretty fast. So considering you've already built four staff blink and maybe shadow blade, and considering you can 1v1 any hero, split push to your heart's content. The only way to take you down is to send at least two heroes back, and at that point you've just won by sheer numbers. And now that we're getting to uh, near the end, here, <clears throat> we're going to talk about memes. And this isn't a joke. Memes have this weird effect on the cultural zeitgeist in much the same way that common sayings that rhyme do. Like, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words can never hurt me. Ah, uh -huh. have you ever played a game of Dota? Just because people say it doesn't really mean it's true. Just like, LC junglers are bad. In fact, by saying it, you are actually propagating the Tinkerbell effect. Whether or not it's true at the start, it becomes more and more real the more people believe it, just like when Tinkerbell can only survive when people believe in her. If LC jungle is said to be bad, and that mimetic idea is shared throughout the entire Dota community, good players who could make LC jungle work, die out, and you're only left with people who just don't listen to typical build strats and ways of thinking. And those people end up overlapping with people who don't really play as a team. So what you're actually doing is creating a scenario in which the sample size of bad LC junglers gets closer and closer to 100% of LC junglers by eliminating good LC junglers. LC in theory can jungle efficiently, it's just bad ones don't leave jungle at level 6 or after a blink or something. And like all junglers, LC leaves a void in the lanes that means the rest of the team have to sort of compensate. You can absolutely do that. Clinks can solo, Weaver can solo, both of these guys are pretty good solo safe laners. If you have this sort of build, go jungle with LC. It's just a bad jungler, LC or no, is bad because they don't pay back that lack of farm on the solo laner. But then again, I've got no real numbers to back this up, and with enough persuasiveness you can sort of make anything believable. But it's fun to chuck words around. But hang on. A shitty player who doesn't listen to typical build strats and ways of thinking? Oh god! That's me! Hi there. Uh, this episode was brought to you by Foxy of Fucking Luxley, Free Kill, Chris, 1996, Gore Rocker, The Adam Sandler Attack Crab, Elohu Dankbar, Lucas Cocoon, Michael Robb, Mr. Revolute, Post, Shadow Sweetheart, Jeff Miller, Ashen Rabbit, Kim Nelson, Haha, ha, I saw these guys a whole day ago, I'm Pickle Rick, KKK, oh no, that one guy who jungles Tinker and everybody else, Mr. Magic aka The Tones, Kaiser Wilhelm, Huber Motherfucking Cumberdale, Raphael Silva, Freed of Londor, Shiva's Guard, oh, and don't worry, it's a male nipple so it's okay, Red, English Breakfast Tea, Digital Dark, Pro S, Sandy Kasaba, Orange Filter Sky, Procrastination Studios, Leonard, Yabus McGee, Saranok, Jolly Drew Giant, Carbon Bond, XT, Christian Rudder, Mylocott, Average Soul, Scar, Apache Mari wearing a headwear neckwear nicknamed as Hatcrafter, Red Gumafleur, Hi I'm Eric and I'm a filthy fucking slag first. Oh, haha, haha. Jim Bob, the Son of God, Tsunami Shadow, Poonith P, Rhett Mitchell, Exato, Whimsy Shire Magic, Wag One, Pifting, What's Your BBM Pin, Grooman, Emmy Dies Alone, Keg Gizzard, and the Shady Wizard, Xena Penumbra, Sleepers for the Week, Herpa Derpa Duda Derp, Swaggity Booty Beep Boop D, Tugs McBoat, Sapalega Lamb on the side for it, Radalus, 
Kerosene, 15 for the rest. 